So, track guide for Thruxton Park. Thruxton <laughs> Park? Uh, track guide for Thruxton Park, turn one, third gear, um, and don't use too much track on the exit. Complex is technically turn three, four, and five. Um, it's all second gear for second gear at turn three and four, and then for turn five, you click to third gear. Quite a tricky corner, you don't really want to rush the first right because it can mess you line up for the second left at the complex, which is turn four. And then again, you don't want to use too much track on the exit of turn four. You want to be able to pull it back and get a nice uh, run through turn five without using too much track on the exit. FP1's already done, it's Friday lunchtime. Weather-wise, it's been atrocious so far. It hammered it down in the night, then warmed up this morning and dried up. So the start of my session was patchy and then it chucked it down with rain again. Now it's glorious sunshine, and really windy. It's dried it all up. Super bites have just gone out and it started raining just as they left the pits. So I think it's just gonna be one of those weekends. For people that haven't ridden around here, Thruxton is so fast and bumpy. It's an awesome track to ride, but when the weather's like this, Although the track's really grippy, out the back it's like getting blasted with 140 mile an hour rain, it's bizarre. I don't even know where I finished in the first session, but we were sort of in and out all session, trying to get the bike set up in the wet weather conditions. At the end of the session we found a bit of a direction where we think it would be better. We also had a new engine after brands to try, and so far that was fine as well. So, see what the weather does this afternoon. It's currently blowing a gale, the winds are about 30 mile an hour and gusting quite bad as well and it's also sprinkling with rain, so sit tight, see what the weather does, and I'll check back in later. I mentioned the glove dryer in my last video when I was packing the van, so this is the glove dryer in action. It hammered it down this morning, so my gloves are absolutely soaked, so for people that are interested in buying one, I'll put the link in my description below. It's just off Amazon, but it's basically got a timer, and put the gloves on there, and they're nice and dry for the next session. Because there's nothing worse than trying to hang on to a super bike when you've got soaking wet gloves and just nice to have dry kit. So I use that for my gloves. You can also stick your boots on it as well. And the other thing I'm doing in the back, to show you this, it's my suit dryer. It's currently on. Got it on the hot setting because these were soaking as well. So I'm just trying to dry those out for the next session. Turn six is noble, it's a really fast left hand corner, you approach it in fifth gear then you back to fourth to help pull the bike into the corner. It's a double apex but you have to try and make sure you get into the first apex of the corner else you'll never make the second one. And then you come out of there to Village. Village is a big long right hander, it's quite bumpy so you want to stick to the inside and everyone's got their own idea of how to do the corner but I just like keeping tight there. Um, and try not to use too much track on the exit. There is a big bump if you go too tight, so it's just trying to find uh, the best line on the exit and make sure you get um, the best run down to church. Church is the fastest corner on the calendar for the year. It's fifth gear on the approach to it. You go back to fourth and there's no corner quite like it in the entire world really. It's really fast, really bumpy and you just have to make sure that you don't run too wide on the way out so you can stand the bike up and get the bike driving. It's also really important to try and save your tyre during the race so you've got enough grip on the way out of here on the last lap to head down to the chicane. The chicane, which is technically the last corner at Thruxton, um, you don't want to rush the first right. If you do, it, make, it tightens up the, the next left and then tightens up the next right, which is the last corner. So you want to be patient on the entry there 
set yourself up for the left and then make sure you get a nice run through the left right and try and stand that bike up try not to smoke the tire and, and spin the tire too much and then it leads on to the start finish straight which is basically a corner as well so yeah lap of thruxton one of these ready in case you want to go halfway Fourteen mil straight out of his hand into mine. Just bring it forward. There won't be much oil on it. Not doing that. Oh. No. If it's like that, I'm going to put the on that car. Give me to spread. That's it. One, two, three. Up. Second session done, ended up fifth in the second session. It was a bit better, bike felt good. Um, just really hit and miss with the weather again. I've not had a race weekend quite like this. We went out at the start and the track was dry, but it was raining, so everyone just committed like it was dry. Because the tracks are grippy here, you can get away with quite a lot of rain before it actually gets slippy. Then everyone started having a few moments, everyone came in, and then it stopped raining, so everyone went back out, got out on the dries, set the fifth fastest lap, and then it chucked it down again. So everyone came straight back in and we sort of sat it out till the end. So got a few changes to make with the bike. I could do with a little bit more rear grip. So we're just going to try and work on that for tomorrow. And yeah, it's just a waiting game really. See what the weather does. It's so hit and miss. It's hard to call what it's going to do. If it rains, then that's fine. Currently making my pasta. I have veggie sausages and pasta every single night. Any of my friends that know me will know that I have the most sensitive stomach in the world and on race weekends it gets 10 times worse so I have to eat the plainest food I possibly can to survive and then uh, Sunday night I can go big again and just eat what I want. So Saturday debrief and it's not a good one. Unfortunately this morning in qualifying I qualified 14th. I really struggled with the bike this morning, we just didn't really get a good feeling. Yesterday it was half wet, half dry. I didn't really get many laps in and didn't really give us a good chance to get the bike set up properly. So yeah, it was a, a bad qualifying end up 14th. So I knew I was going to have my work cut out in the race, um, obviously at Brands I qualified 13th and we ended up on the podium, but it was different at Brands because I had a lot more confidence in myself and the pace I had, um, whereas today I didn't. So long story short, set off in the race, got an alright start, got up to about 11th and I was in the pack which probably could have taken me up to a, a few more positions, but unfortunately got caught out in the first chicane and I lost the front. So it was a no score, really disappointing because that's obviously not what I need to be doing to win a championship. But I was kind of expecting it to be honest. I had a few moments in the race leading up to it and it's just the way it goes sometimes. No one's fault really, we just got caught out with our setup and with limited time. Sometimes it's just a bit of a gamble 
or a lottery as to who ends up with a good setup when you're going into the race. It's also difficult when you're going into a race to make big changes with a bike because it's such a gamble, you don't know what it's going to do. So yeah, kind of got stuck with that setting. But since the race, we've sat down, I've calmed down now, looked at the data, um, and basically we're just going to try and put the bike back to somewhere closer to where we started the season with it, where I was confident and happy with it, and go from there. But yeah, frustrating because the last two times or last three times I've been here on a stock bike I've either finished first or second so I kind of wasn't really expecting anything other than that today. So that's that, the highs and lows of motorbike racing. We've got another race tomorrow, can put it right tomorrow, make this change for morning warm up, hopefully that makes it feel slightly better, get starting the race, get stuck in and see where we end up after. Oh yeah, I feel great, I feel like I'm going to be better in the next round. <laughs> Are we, are we gonna go and like look in some other riders motorhomes? Yeah, but this is gonna be the brand new series of Mucky motorhomes that carry it on from the 1980 Grand Prix season with my dad. Yeah. And uh, is it on? Just, it's on now, it's recording. Yeah, but is it like, obviously we're not going into mine because mine's a <laughs> box and all you super bike riders are fast ones. <laughs> Superstar. <laughs> Super uh, right, so this is... Who are you going in one, first? Well, this is Kyle Rides. We've got to be careful. He's not in. You sure he's not in? No, we know he's not in. But we're just gonna go have a look. Oh, yeah, then. Oh, are we, are we gonna do like full crib yeah, thing where the, the fridge? fridge? The fridge quick. Well, obviously he's got a really, really good um, I'll take posh doormat. Posh doormat. Oh, and he's well off because he's got fancy trainers and Hugo Boss sliders. The number What's one thing noise? in Kai's life is his PlayStation. He's got his PlayStation set. It up. looks like it looks like it's been mugged and someone stuck his clothes <laughs> off in his living room. <laughs> what else? Have a look in the fridge. He's not done his washing up. It's because his mum's not here, his mum does his washing. Whoa. What's in the fridge? So, well, I don't know if you could put that together, could you? Lucas Aid, oh, avocados, <laughs> Lucas Aid, salmon. Someone's in the shower. F off. Kyle? Someone's in the shower. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is this not my motto? <laughs> Leave a rotten intruder. Conclude the first Bucky Motorhome tour. <laughs> You're rubbing his chewing gum. Alright, good to see you. Oh dear. <laughs> Just want to quickly interrupt this video with some very exciting news and a big thank you to temprocket.com who have come on board as a personal sponsor and they're going to sponsor this channel for the remainder of the season. Temprocket is a unique, powerful tool for finding and booking temporary staff. Harnessing the power of online technology, the platform transforms temporary staff recruitment by bringing the three key players, hirers, agencies and contractors, together in one place to deliver a quicker, more efficient solution for all parties 24-7. Making life easier for contractors and freelancers, creating more business for agencies and simplifying the recruitment process for the hirer, Temprocket is a win-win-win. Please visit www.temprocket.com for more information. Back to the video. Well, that's this weekend done and dusted. Finished 10th in the race. Not my finest work, just um, it was hard when I qualified 12th. I sort of got away with everyone, but then there was two bunches appeared and I ended up in the second bunch. And it was it's too difficult really to try and bridge that gap because everyone's so fast, it's so competitive. So I managed to pick a couple of people off as the tyres wore down a bit. But yeah, bit of a shame. It's how racing goes sometimes. We've had two tough weekends and we've still managed to survive with a third or fourth a crash and a tenth and this championship's still very much on so I've got two weeks off now i'm going to go back reset regroup come back and 
be ready for Donington.